Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and if you haven't seen one of these presentations, I'm an elder law attorney. I'm at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, I do these presentations monthly, and every November I do the same presentation. This is my push to have you take the time right now to figure out whether your current Medicare plan is the plan that you want to have for next year. It's, this is just really, really important. All other planning issues can be postponed. This one can't. It's a small window. So here's the story. The point of this is you've, you've heard me do many presentations before. Um, and I always end by saying the point of this is peace of mind, helping you get a good night's sleep. Um, you may be getting a good night's sleep right now, not thinking about Medicare, but that may be a mistake. You may be losing money and not even realizing it, thinking you should, you're, getting, you're getting a good night's sleep, but you should be really bothered about this. So this is the point of this presentation. Um, so my, my, my couple that I always talk about is my friends Frank and Mary and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Frank and Mary, back in the old days when they were younger and the kids were just growing, had a set of insurance worries. There are various. You know, what about if the house burns down? We should be insuring against that. What about if one of us drops dead? We should be insuring against that. What about if we get into a car accident? We should be insuring against that. What about if somebody gets hurt? Typically, when you're a parent, you're thinking about the kids getting hurt. We should insure against that. And those are all the worries against, against which or for which people are willing to pay insurance so they can sleep better. Now, as Frank and Mary get older, some of those risks have just gone away. The kids grew up. Now they're worried about their own kids. Um, and there's still the worry about the, the house burning down or, or dying, although life insurance gets to be less of a worry as you get older because typically that life insurance was to make sure that your spouse was going to be okay if you died early and now they're just getting older. The big one, of course, becomes what if I get sick? What if I get sick? What's going to be the cost of that sickness? And there's a whole little constellation of related costs. There's the hospital, there's the doctor, there's the ambulance, there's drugs, there's physical therapy, there's a million things now, until the 1960s, when I was actually young, um, these were big, big, big worries. Because the answer to these questions was all Medicare, but Medicare didn't get created until the mid-1960s. Which is why, while back in 1960, if you were a senior, 33% of all senior households were in poverty in 1960. In 2020, that figure was 6%. That's the change that resulted as a result of Medicare because it used to be that there wasn't, there simply wasn't health insurance for the old and so people would get sick, go broke and die. So now you've got Medicare. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Medicare first. There is the traditional Medicare, that, which is kind of where Medicare started, so-called Medicare A and B, um, which if you have traditional Medicare right now, you have this, you have Medicare A, which covers hospital stays, um, skilled nursing facilities up to 100 days. Um, medical care at home, actually. I often talk to people about the fact that many people aren't even aware of this, this Medicare benefit. If you're homebound and you can't get to the hospital to go to physical therapy and all, then you can get Medicare benefit at home. And then there's hospice, a benefit available if you are, your doctor says that given how things are now progressing, you may die within the next six months. But the point is, each of these pieces actually has a deductible to it, uh, except for the hospice benefit. Um, and, and, and then there's Medicare B. Medicare B covers, like everything else, all the other things, the doctors, the day treatments, the emergency room, um, the labs, the durable medical equipment. Now, Medicare B, however, uh, not only have, has co-pays to it, whatever, you, you, whatever service you get under Me Medicare B, um, Medicare will only pay 80% of that for that service. Um, and, and so there's, there's a, a copay. But then there's also a deductible that you're now paying if you're on Medicare. You're paying a, a monthly deductible, which actually varies depending on your income. Um, that's basically how Medicare B works. But, but because Medicare A and Medicare B both have uh, um, uh, co-pays involved with them, and Medicare um, B is, as well also has that de the, uh, the, uh, the deductible. But the point is, for both of these programs, 
most folks will also buy a Medicare supplemental plan. And the purpose of the Medicare supplemental plan is to reduce your potential liability resulting from deductibles and copays. And depending on the nature of that plan, and these plans vary, there are a lot of companies that offer them. Many companies offer different levels of plan from platinum to different, there are different levels. Um, that basically, the more that you're paying in premium, the more that the plan is agreeing to pay in these kinds of supplemental benefits. So the, so the point is, one of the first things that you wanna be doing um, every year is re-examining what that supplemental plan looks like, whether that supplemental plan that you thought was really good for this year is going to be the best plan for next year. Because one of the wonderful features of Medicare, I mean, it's kind of a plus and a minus, is that everything resets once a year. Everything resets once a year. So the, so the Medicare, while Medicare A and B don't change, the supplemental plans that, that you now have maybe not the supplemental plans that you might be wanting next year. And that may be a function of how healthy you are, how healthy you are right now, and whether as a result of things that have happened this year in 2022, you may be thinking there may be more expenses, medical expenses next year than there were this year. And so you wanna make sure that you've got a plan that's gonna cover those expenses. So, You've got, you, while, while Medicare A and Medicare B are just what they are, the supplemental plans are really all over the map. You need to be investigating those. Then of course, there's Medicare D, um, which created during the George Bush administration, one of the great achievements of the George, the, uh, George W. Bush administration. Uh, the creation or the addition to Medicare of a way to have seniors pay for their drugs. Up until that time, this, this, be, this was just a, a, a major cost for most seniors was simply the cost of their drugs. So the Medicare D plan, as opposed to A and B, was built all around the private market. There isn't the standard set of, of benefits um, that you get for this kind of standard price. Instead, every year you need to shop to find the plan that is going to be the plan that's going to work for you. Now, people tend to shop for these plans totally based on price. Well, they say, well, this is a simple exercise. Which one's the cheapest? And which one has the lowest premium? That's the one I'm going to get. But of course, the real cost of your drugs next year isn't the cost of the, the drug premium. It's the cost of the, of the, of the insurance premium plus whatever you're paying for co-pays or for deductibles regarding those drugs and whatever you're paying totally on your own because the drug isn't covered as part of your plan. And, and remember, every year, every plan changes. Nothing is fixed. So that very same Medicare D plan that may have covered your drugs this year for a very good price, next year may not cover your drugs at all right? Or maybe covering your same drugs, but for a much higher price. You need to know how that gets figured out. Um, and then finally, there are the Medicare C plans. Now, we're only going to talk about these briefly as part of this presentation, because in some places, specifically on Nantucket and on Martha's Vineyard, Medicare C plans are not available. Most people in Massachusetts don't realize that um, actually that we're, the, the latest statistic I read was 33%, but I just saw a projection that said that by the year 2030, 50% of all seniors will be on so-called Medicare C plans. These are, these are often referred to as Medicare Advantage plans. They are basically plans that, that all offered on the private market, all offered in the private sector, and they're meant to bundle all of the, the medical things that you might need. So they're meant to bun bundle, you know, among other things, um, um, the cost of all the drugs. So it always includes a drug portion. It always covers Medicare A and B. It covers all of the things that Medicare A and B cover, but it may also cover the deductibles. It typically will co cover the deductibles depending on the level of the plan. Uh, and then it may offer some things that typically you wouldn't even find in Medicare A or Medicare B. Things like dental insurance or things like 
uh, uh, eye doctor appointments and eye, and, 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 uh, and eye insurance. So it, it they, these plans cover a variety of things. The only common feature of all Medicare Advantage plans is they're required to cover everything or to offer all of the services that Medicare A and Medicare B covers. Beyond that, it could be anything. Uh, they may cover dental, they may cover hearing, they may cover eye care. They may cover, so there, uh, there's one plan that's called the Silver Sneakers Benefit. Uh, it covers your health, it, your, 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 the, the cost of your going to the health club. It covers the cost of your staying healthy because these folks really want you to stay healthy so they won't have to pay uh, in, in the event that you get sick. So the, there's, there's, there's good news and there's bad news about all of this. The good news is whether it's A or B, whether it's Medicare D, the drug plan, or Medicare C, which, which is the Medicare Advantage, which, which, which basically builds in all of these plans under one roof, everybody qualifies for all plans. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing that no matter how old you are, no matter what your health condition, even if you know that, for example, because of your current health problems that have come up, you're going to have serious bills next year that you weren't anticipating this year, you can then look for the plan that's going to, that's going to, to, to maximize your benefit while minimizing your cost. You can actually tailor make the plan, whether it's because of the kind of surgeries that you're going to get, because of the kind of drugs that you're going to need. It, it's, it, it, it covers everything. It covers everything. Um, and, you can re and you can build your own plan, and, that, and you can do it during that enrollment period, October 15th to December 7th. And this seminar is being shown throughout, through, no, through November because we want to pick up everybody that wants to think about redoing their plans. The bad news is, in my opinion, I may be wrong about this, you will never figure this out on your own. You just won't figure it out on your own. It's, there are just too many variables. So my strong suggestion, here, first of all, here's a way to think about this. Um, and, and you may want to start off by thinking about it without talking to anybody else. See how far you get and then say to yourself, don't I really want to have a second opinion where, this, where, the, where the first opinion is just me having tried to figure this out? Don't I want to have a second opinion? So start off with that Medicare D plan. Start off with your drug plan. There is no piece of your medical cost, right, that is more variable across the board than the drug plan, the nature of the plan that you're currently getting, the, the, and the nature of the drugs that you're currently using. So you want to you do really kind of several things. You want to you figure out regarding that Medicare D plan, well, actually, excuse me, I'm just going to kind of outline all of the steps, then I'm going to go back to this. So you want to start off by figuring out your Medicare D plan. Then you want to figure out your Medicare supplemental coverage. Then you want to figure out the Medicare C alternatives because once you have the D plan um, and the supplemental coverage in one place, now you know what the cost it is going to be unless you do an entire alternative package. Then you can successfully consider what the alternative package might look like. So figuring out your Medicare D plan. Ideally, the way to figure this out is to, you, you can go on the internet, you can go on the Medicare website and they tell you that you can, on your own, figure this all out on the Medicare website. And maybe if you're really, really, really adept, you can do that. But I wouldn't count on it. For those of you who, like me, don't want to ba basically spend you know, hours or, or days trying to figure out how this system works, I would strong, strongly recommend either A, calling your senior center and asking to talk to a shine counselor. These shine counselors some of them are volunteers, some of them are actually staff at the senior center. All of them go through rigorous training once a year, every year, they, they go through training to find out what all of the new plans are or what are the, or, and how all the old plans have changed and also how to use that website, the Medicare website, to actually help you calculate your best deal. So if you can't find a Shine Counselor, you can actually go to the website of the Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. They actually have a group there that will help you figure this out. Or you can go to a private advisor. 
There are private advisors that do this? Well, yes, actually, and I, I've, I've brought Peter McKay's name up before because on Nantucket there actually is no shine counselor. There was a person who was doing this a few years ago and he, he no longer can do it, uh, so he stopped. There is no shine counselor on Nantucket. You may want to talk to Peter. Peter for years and years was at the, uh, the uh, like if I'm on Nantucket, everybody knows him because he was the, kind of the, 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 the main person uh, at the hospital. And so he, basically his job caused him to know all about all of these programs. He now is retired, but he does this part time. Now he, can, he charges you for this. He charges you for this. So you may want to talk to Peter about how much he charges and whether you think that this might be worthwhile. But I can tell you, he has saved a lot of people thousands and thousands of dollars. So you may want to think about talking to him. So when you're thinking about that plan though, and, and I get part of this by having just talked to Peter, the question is kind of how do you think this out? So you want to figure out, first of all, what is your current drug usage? What drugs are you using? And how often are you, what is the strength at which you're using them? And how often are you using them? How many times per day or per week or per month? Then you start looking at, then you look at the mirror. Look in the mirror. What do you think your health is going to be like next year? Do you think that those, the drugs that you are now using, that those prescriptions are going to change next year? Maybe you want to talk to your doc about that. How much risk do you want to be taking regarding what's going to be happening in your, in your health situation next year? And then how much risk can you afford to take? Many people will, will simply buy the most expensive plan because they figure that way I'm for sure covered. And some folks have the luxury to do that, but kind of like not everybody, not everybody. Then when you're thinking about the drugs, get some professional advice, first of all, regarding what drugs you are now using. Brand names versus generics. Is there a drug that you are now using for which not only can you shop around among the, the Medicare D plans regarding who's going to cover that drug, but is there a drug for which you could actually get a generic that can substitute for the drug that you're using that can save you a lot of money, right? So you may want, or even if it's not between a generic and a name brand of a particular drug, maybe there's simply a different drug that you can use. I know that's one of the things that Peter McKay taught me. Oftentimes we'll speak to folks and say, you know, have you talked to your doctor who has prescribed drug A and asked your doctor, is there another drug that I could use that could accomplish the same thing? Because the doctor's job is not to try to figure out the best price for you. The doctor's job is to try to figure out what he thinks is the right drug for you, right? But it may very well be that if you, if you ask about what the alternatives are, he may be able to point out a drug that would be, he or she may be able to point out a drug that would be equally successful as far as you're concerned, but for a lower price, right? Um, what pharmacy are you using? One of the amazing things about all of the Medicare D plans is that the, the prices of these drugs vary not only by what plan you have, but literally by what, the, by what pharmacy you're buying the drug from. Because many of the, of the pharmaceutical companies have, and many of these, these insurance companies have got special deals that involve both the pharmaceutical company and the pharmacy. So you could literally be, 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 be shopping at a Walgreens on one side of the street and, for, and paying X for a drug and be paying 50% of that price across the street at the CVS or vice versa. This varies completely depending on what's going on in your own market. Now one of the nice things about the Medicare website, once you get to be an adept on the Medicare website, and I saw folks using it, it's quite something, is that you can find that out. You can actually look for, you can, look, you can, you can shop by, the by what your drugs are, by what the pharmacies are in your area, and find out, and, and then by the, what the drug plan is, and find out how the prices vary. Finally, uh, there's something called prescription advantage. Um, that many people pre confuse prescription advantage with, with Medicare advantage. I was talking about these so-called Medicare C plans, the Medicare Advantage plans. There was a, a state-run program called Medicare Advantage designed for folks based on their income, who based on their incomes might have a lot of trouble paying for the kinds of drugs that we're talking about here. 
through which you can get reduced um, 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 drug costs or, or the elimination of drug costs. This is not mass health. This is not a program for which you're going to need to qualify based on your assets. These are prescription advantages, totally an income-based um, program. So you should, you should look to see whether prescription advantage can really help you. So that's all about drugs. And, and by the way, I, just, I always use Carolyn McLeod's picture because she's like the greatest shine counselor I have ever met. It happens that she works through the Southboro Senior Center. But this leads me to another obs observation, which is the shine um, counselors are, are not bound to a particular, or I shouldn't put it that way. It's not that they're not bound to a particular senior center. You're not bound to a particular senior center because all the senior centers are funded uh, to some extent by the state. Uh, one of the requirements of that funding is that no matter what, where you live, you can call in to these other senior centers. So in the case of Shine Counselors, if you tur it turns out that you've called your senior center and your senior center, the Shine Counselors are booked out, they may be able to suggest other senior centers in the area where you can call. Uh, so once you have kind of thought out what your, or found out what your Medicare D options are, um, then, and then, you, and you've looked at what the Medicare supplemental plans might be, then look at what your Medicare C options are, uh, unless you're in Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Once again, many companies have uh, Medicare C plans. Uh, they vary all over the map, all over the map, in terms of what drugs they cover, in terms of uh, uh, what, the, what the deductibles are, in terms of just everything that could possibly vary does vary according to what your Medicare C plans. And as, I, and as I mentioned earlier, many of these plans offer special bells and whistles, um, at, like eye exams and dental and the so-called um, silver sneakers program. As a general piece of advice, one of the things that Carolyn McLeod uh, taught me was that the, 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 sick, the healthier you are, the more you want to look at the Medicare C plans. Um, because they may have, have um, you know, better, better price schemes and they have some of these extras, they have these wellness programs, et cetera. The sicker you are, the more likely it is that your best deal is traditional Medicare A plus B uh, plus a supplemental. But once again, this is all about figuring out the numbers. This is all about figuring out the numbers. This is, these are all math questions, right? And, and you need to start off by figuring out, given what your health is and what kinds of things you may be needing, what the, what, the, what the premiums would be for the different kinds of plans and what the potential cost to you would be uh, using any one of those different plans. So once you've done all of this stuff, you want to add up everything. You want to add up your, 20, your 2022 bill. What's it going to cost? What would the, the, the what would the, um, and, and then figure out the estimated costs. So what would be the cost of the premium plus the cost of your deductible and the cost of your copay for um, using the traditional plan? What's the Medicare B charge? You know what the Medicare B charge is going to be. What's the Medicare supplemental, supplemental premium going to be? That's going to vary according to the plan. What's your Medicare D premium going to be? Add them all up. Figure out, estimate what your private pay cost is going to be once you've done all of those things. And then finally, compare that, unless you're on Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard, to the best Medicare C plan that you can get. And just, and, and just add it up and then say to yourself, because th this is insurance, so there's always a risk piece here, right? You're, you're basically taking a gamble. Fortunately, it's only a one-year gamble, but you're gambling about what your costs are going to be next year. Figure out how much of a gamble you want to be taking, and then um, realize your needs change every year, your plan can change every year, your old plan not, may not be the right plan for you this year, this year's or, or the 2023 plan may not be the best plan when you get to 2024. Once you've done all that, buy yourself dinner. Hey, you know, take a break and realize that once again, the goal of all of this is to sleep well at night. If you're not worried about it um, and you've got a lot of money and you're not worried that maybe you're throwing some of it away, you can sleep fine. 
if you are worried about these things, it is worth going through this exercise and it's worth going through it right now. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, and uh, as I indicate on my, uh, you can, if you want to see this presentation again, you can also watch it on, uh, on Elder Law Frank and Mary, which is uh, uh, Frank and Mary's YouTube channel. Or you can call me anytime if you have any questions. I never charge for advice. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the presentation and happy Thanksgiving.